The Federal Reserve has launched FedNow in what many are calling the first step towards the creation of the digital dollar and the widespread adoption of CBDCs. But how will FedNow work? Are the concerns surrounding this platform and the creation of the digital dollar truly justified? What is FedNow? FedNow is a platform that the Federal Reserve has just launched, aiming to modernize bank transfers into the 21st century. Currently, sending money from one bank to another, depositing a check, and other types of transfers can take days to process and the available options are sometimes costly, limited in amounts, or dependent on business days. And even in the United States, which has the most developed financial markets, its bank transfer speed lags far behind, falling even below Nigeria. And this is where FedNow comes in. But how does it work? Taking the example provided by the Federal Reserve, let's suppose a business needs to purchase inventory. It places an online order, and their bank or credit union receives the instruction, sending the signal to this new platform, which debits the money from one bank and credits it to the other. FedNow operates 24-7 and it takes only about 20 seconds to complete the transaction. Additionally, it costs only half of the current options. So far, 57 financial institutions, including notable ones like JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, have become early adopters of this technology. However, Bank of America and Citigroup have not implemented it yet. And though, overall, the implementation of this platform is positive and necessary, it has not gone unnoticed by the public, who have serious concerns about it. These concerns can be divided into two groups, the first being those who are worried about the platform itself, and the second being those who see it as the first step toward the implementation of a digital dollar. Let's explore the concerns of the first group. Firstly, fraud. Currently, due to the longer transaction times, there is more time for detecting fraud. Secondly, transactions would become irrevocable and instantaneous, allowing the recipient to withdraw the money immediately. Thirdly, there are concerns that bank runs could occur more easily, where banks do not have enough funds in their accounts to cover all customer withdrawals. Lastly, there are worries that the Federal Reserve is taking control of services that are also provided by private entities. The second group is more speculative because it is based on the possibility that this is the first step towards the adoption of the digital dollar. Although the Fed has stated that there is no connection between the two and has not made a decision regarding the creation of its own CBDC, people know they must be skeptical about the Fed's claims. One of them is the Democratic candidate Robert Kennedy, who associates FedNow with the creation of the digital dollar. But what are the concerns with the creation of a digital dollar? In broad terms, there are three. The first is privacy. In fact, it was the biggest concern according to surveys by the European Central Bank when they were structuring the digital euro. Because the Federal Reserve, although independent from the government, has its chairman and board of governors, the highest body of this institution, appointed by the president. And there is fear that if this currency is implemented, the government will have direct access to people's transaction information. The second concern is the disappearance of cash. Because a CBDC acts as digital cash, and if widely adopted, it renders physical cash unnecessary. This concern arises from the experience in China, which is a pioneer in CBDCs, and comments made by the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. People are increasingly paying digitally instead of using cash. Almost half of Euro-area consumers say that they prefer to pay with cashless means of payment, such as cards. We will continue to provide cash. But if it is used less and less for payments, public money could ultimately lose its role as the monetary anchor for the hybrid model, threatening its key function in securing trust in payments with implications for the economy. Payments are a public good that is simply too important to be left to the market only. The third concern, which goes hand in hand with all this, is control. While currently, a person's bank accounts can be frozen for crimes or legal reasons, it is feared that such digital currencies could facilitate incidents like what happened in Canada in 2022, where the government ordered the freezing of bank accounts of protesters. Before I continue, remember to subscribe to keep yourself updated on the trends that are shaping the world economy. All of this will only be known with time, but some concerns are unjustified when considering how the current system operates. 
The Fed already processes the majority of transactions in the United States through Fedwire and FedACH. So far, it has not resulted in the Fed taking over the market or forcing financial institutions to adopt it and this would be an upgrade to this system. However, when it comes to the Fed and the government, it is better to be cautious because the digital dollar could become a reality very soon. And you, do you think it's just a much needed upgrade to the transaction system or the first step towards the digital dollar? Let us know in the comments, and if you want to find out what could happen to the dollar's position as the dominant currency in the world, I recommend watching this video.